So today I'll be making a bowl from not a board, but a bowl from four thin boards, one eighth of an inch thick. And it's exactly how I do a dizzy bowl. So what I do here, you can make a dizzy bowl. The only difference is it'll be a, a laminated board. This will just be four different types of wood. I've got circles laid out on this. If you had a scroll saw, which I had one, I got rid of it, you could put a little hole in here and cut these rings out. What I generally do, and the reason I do it on a dizzy bowl, is in order to slice the boards out of what looks like a butcher block, I can do a half of a board better than I can a 10 inch thick one and get nice cuts. So I will take those rectangle boards, book them together, lay the circles out, and then I cut them on a bandsaw. Glue them together and just dress it up. Works great. Again, that's not what we're doing today. So here's what we're doing. Let me get this set up and I'll show you all the rings that I have. Well, here are the discs. That's uh, Paduke, that's Cherry, that's Cambia Poplar, and that's Birch. And to me that looks really close, but I'm partially colorblind. My wife says she can tell the difference easily. So I'm going with that. And yeah, the rings are cut. I cut them on my laser. I needed to prove to myself that I could keep the centers where it belonged. And I understood exactly what I did wrong, and that'll never happen again. Also, I'm not going to show you any of this cutting on this video. Some people love lasers, and some people really hate lasers. So I am not going to do any laser cutting on my wood turning videos. But if you want to see how that's done, it's in a recent uh, video on that laser, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Here's how it works. You take the largest ring from each species. That goes on top of that. This goes on top of this. This goes on top of that. The way this is laid out, they're all 732nd step. If I measure that step all the way around, it will be the proper position and the angle will be good. We'll get this one on there and that one here and there and here. Okay, like that. So I'm not going to try to line these up because they'll just wiggle around. Once they're in position, all of the edges should be touching. That will be 60 degrees. Inside will be 60 degrees. That's what we're going with and actually I will not be using that one. That's um, next one is on that one. That was just a, a uh, plug that came out of the bottom that is not needed. In here I've got the base it looks pretty cool, but I went ahead and glued it up because it's pretty basic. So next thing we do is I'll start gluing this ring on and we'll see how far I go. I might flip it upside down and put it in the glue press. Okay, time for the fun part. Get all these rings glued onto this base, which I already glued up and I made it a lot bigger in diameter than what it's going to end up. And one reason was it kept everything nice and flat as I got to this point. And it's also going to be nice and sturdy while I turn the rest. And the last thing I do will reshape this bottom. So I'm going to get a couple rings on and uh, go back inside because it is slightly below being too cold right now. So it's just all of a sudden got cold around here again. That's a little cone that I have on the end of this. Helps line it up. Once I get to the big ones, I probably won't be able to use those cones, but I'll just measure in four places and it'll be centered. So that one is centered right now. 
let that sit for a while, we'll get another one on it, and then I'm going inside. I turned the heat back on while the first one was setting up, and I left it on, and I'll just go through this process of gluing, and I'll keep the heat on so I stay warm. The process here, especially on the smaller ones, is I'll get one glued and clamped and let it sit for maybe 15 minutes until the glue tacks up. And then you can see I just took a flat board with sandpaper on it and I'll flatten the layer out, glue the next one on and do the same thing. And right here I've got a much larger block pushing against the bigger rings and I'm using the little spring clamps. And the same thing, that could sit for 20-30 minutes and I can get the next row on. So it goes fairly fast. So this is the last ring that goes on. And I'll show you the process, what I do here. And I've been running the heater, so let me shut that off so you can hear and so I can hear. So this is already flat. All these rings are flat on one side. I set it up on my bandsaw with the uh, sled that I made for slicing rings. And I cut it with a 10 tooth blade. That hardly needs sanding, but I left these a little bit heavy so I could make sure I flattened them. So how I flatten them is I just use a board with sandpaper on it. I think that's probably going to be pretty close. I'm looking for 125, that's 127. That's close enough. I'm going to go ahead and take the mask off. What I've done on the side that was flat is I'll take a pencil and I'll make a line holding it against the outside edge and hopefully it's slightly bigger in diameter than what that is. And then I'll line it up, bring up this, and there. Now I can push it into place and check it out. Try to get it so I can see the pencil line everywhere, and that should be plenty close enough. We'll go ahead and get glue on it. I thought it'd be easier to explain this on a bigger disc than the little ones. Looks pretty close. Put some pressure on this clamp and then I'll just use these spring clamps across that make sure I get that edge. Alright, I replaced all the long ones with the little short ones so I could get it turning all the way around and look at it really good and I think I got a better angle with the little ones. So. I'm going to let this sit for at least three hours and maybe it'll be till tomorrow because we've got something going on this afternoon. So I'll uh, see you when we get back on this. So we did leave it clamped up all night long. It's ready to be turned. Not a lot of turning to go on here. It's not that big, but I've got a sharpened up half inch bowl gouge and I just need to get rid of these steps and then we'll see what else we can do to it. Turn in uh, 1,000 RPM.
Alright, so this will be pretty simple to sand. I'm just going to use my 2 inch disc starting with 80 grit. We'll get it sanded up and I won't put a finish on it right now, but we'll get turned around here so we can get on the back side and finish that. All right, doesn't get much easier than that. We'll get it sanded to 400, and then we'll uh, work on the bottom side. Right before I turn the inside, I flatten the steps on the underside so I'd be able to measure the wall thickness. I can't find the files. I came in here to edit, and they are nowhere to be found. And you didn't miss much. I just flattened them out. The shaping on the underside is going to happen right now. So sorry about that. Same half inch bowl gouge and I've got about 800 RPM now. So right at this point here, I need some more RPM. This is where it starts to get small. see what we have. So at that point, which I didn't want to cut anything, that's a little over an eighth. And that's plenty thick here. I can take I can take more of that out. I just stopped, I went inside to kind of verify the dimensions that I had created and everything's pretty close except right here that ring is 3 8 larger in diameter than what I drew. I kind of like what that looks like but I like the drawing as well. And this is not a problem, I can cut this off and uh, it's, it's a lot longer than what I drew but I could cut it off anywhere and I can always shorten it if I don't like it. So I'm going to go over it with a negative rake scraper because this is like half end grain. This was not like doing a segment job where it's all flat grain. So I think this negative rake scraper will help clean that up and I'll take some more out of there. Okay, that's a, to me that's a lot nicer. Let's see how much I went down to. Maybe still a quarter inch bigger, but it's really all about how it looks here, not on that piece of paper. I'll go ahead and get this sanded up the same way I did the inside, and then it will be time to put a finish on it, and then I'll park this off. Well, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so I think I'll go ahead and sand it up. It's kind of tight in here, so I won't use the drill and the sanding pad. I'll just use sheets of paper. This is already pretty smooth, so I'll start with 120. Work my way up to 400, and we'll come back and probably spray a finish on. I've got my overhead air filter going and a mask on, so let's get sanded. all sanded up. I'm really liking how it looks. I'm going to put a finish on it right now. And what I do when I have Paduk mixed with other woods, 
is I blow it off with the air compressor. I do it about three times, letting this go around, turning it like this, and just blowing it out till I don't see anything else coming out of the wood. Do not wipe it down with denatured alcohol. That will go into the wood, it'll grab the oils, and it'll make a real pretty stain that stains all the rest of your wood. And you don't want to do that. I don't even wipe it down with water. I just blow it down with compressed air. I like to use lacquer. I spray a real light coat of lacquer on this and if you do a heavy coat the paduk will bleed. A couple of light coats, maybe three light coats. It seals it in then you can get your nice finish on it. Here's how I do it. Got the lathe running really slow. Anything much over what I just did there is too much. This dries fast. In a couple of minutes I can do the same thing again. Then we'll get a nice heavy coat on. And when I say heavy, I mean we'll get it on so we get a build up. Never put it on real heavy. I'll do the inside and I'll come back and I'll show you what happens on the outside again. I think you can see the wood better now with this lighting. I went over it three times with really light coats and then I buffed it out with this white abrasive pad. Now I can put it on a lot heavier. And then I rotate it by hand make sure I didn't miss anything. So I'll do that about maybe two or three more times and then I think that'll be good. So we'll get this all finished up and see it tomorrow when we decide where we want to cut this off. I ended up spraying five full coats of lacquer on the inside and the outside. I went over it again with the white abrasive pad and then I went over it with Axe Abrasive Paste and the polish. The only thing I have left to do is park this off. In my original design, this was going to be about a half inch. I think I like it longer. I'm going to start with just making a cut up here and see how that looks, and then we will make a decision. I've got my real thin parting tool here. a little clearance so I can cut a little angle on it. Because this is flat grain, I've got to be real careful. If I get too small, this could snap right off. So I don't want to take any chances. I think I'll just saw the rest of it off. There it is. I'll get that bottom sanded and uh, I'll be back and show you what we have. Well here it is. It is all done and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I finished it with multiple coats of Def Lacquer sprayed on and X Abrasive Paste and Polish. And I think it left a pretty decent looking finish. It finished 7 inches in diameter. It's 4 inches tall. Each one of those rings is an eighth of an inch thick. And I had it designed for the base being an eighth of an inch, but I, I knew I didn't want that. So I kind of played around with that, and that's a half inch thick. It's made from Paduk, Cherry, Cambia Poplar, and Birch. And just so I wouldn't forget, I put that on the bottom like so. At the end I'll have pictures of course, and I'm also going to put a picture of the original design. And you'll see how I had this drawn and I've changed it. Let me know which one you like better, and let me know if you think this looks a lot like my design. 
I was trying to get it like that, but I also was not locked into it because your final design for me comes at the lathe. But I think it's pretty close. I do know that my wife really likes it a lot, and I hope you liked it as well. I hope you did enjoy the video, and if you did, leave a comment and tell me what you think. Also, you can hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed and you like what you saw, consider doing so. And for all of you who are subscribed, thank you very much. Till the next time, see you later.